All right, so we are going to talk about how to read, which sounds a little ridiculous because you all know how to read, but how to read specifically for these sources on the synthesis FRQ. The first thing is you should not just start reading. All right, we've already gone over a couple of things talking about the source information at the boxes on the, in the top of the page or at the top of the page. Uh, we talked about kind of going through visual data, but you shouldn't just go right into reading. It's not efficient, right? And you only have 15 minutes of reading time allotted to you. So you need to be efficient with that time. Instead of just popping in and starting to read, you need to identify why you are reading. You are reading to answer the prompt, right? At this point, you already have a working thesis and you already have ideas that you want to argue or maybe even a whole working outline as well. You want to do those steps first. The steps you did yesterday, where you really go through and break down the prompt and you figure out what it is you really are supposed to be arguing, what ideas are really standing out to you, having a working thesis, all of that stuff first, so that you can keep that in mind as you're reading. And that's going to guide your reading. You're only going to annotate for things. You're only going to notice things, only going to pay attention to things that in some way relate to your working thesis, to the ideas you want to argue. You do want to be open to new ideas and perspectives, right? If something comes up in the sources that really draws you, be open to it, right? It's a working thesis, a working outline, not a finalized one. You do want to be open to ideas, but having that initial plan, that initial idea in your head is going to help you efficiently read those sources. So as a quick reminder, this was my working thesis and my working outline from yesterday. So I think that libraries should continue to serve important roles in the future, uh, specifically as lenders of books and other media, and as community centers that provide opportunities for education and support. So then I had my ideas that I wanted to argue that kind of aligned with those two parts of my thesis. Great. So now I can, I can go ahead and go to the sources. So here's my first source. We won't read all of them, right? It's just an example. But what do I notice in this source? If I was annotating this on a piece of paper, here's kind of the things that I would jot down. An informed public constitutes the very foundation of a democracy. After all, democracies are about discourse, discourse among the people. If a, so I'm getting that the education is key here, that education is key to a democracy. And I had that word, that, that idea of education in my um, idea list. So I'm going to put a little note there, education. If a free society is to survive, it must ensure the preservation of its records and provide free and open access to this information to all citizens. It must ensure that citizens have the skills necessary to participate in the democratic process. It must allow unfettered dialogue and guarantee freedom of expression. All of this is done in our libraries, the cornerstone of democracy in our communities. So I really like this idea about libraries being a cornerstone of democracies. It's not really something that I initially intended on arguing. I might, if I'm really drawn to that, I might add that idea to my list of ideas. I might add it to my working thesis or my working outline. But for me right now, I'm going to choose not to. So I'm not going to really focus on that. Benjamin Franklin founded the first public lending library in the 1970, or in 1730s. <laughs> His novel idea of sharing information resources was a radical one. In the rest of the civilized world, libraries were the property of the ruling class and religion. The first significant tax-supported public libraries were organized in the mid-19th century, conceived as supplements to the pu public schools, as well as civilizing agents and objects of civic pride in a new, a raw new country. So I'm getting the idea of public service, that this is something that is for everyone, not just the elite. And I'm getting the idea, again, that education is key. Uh, Sydney Ditzion noted that late 19th century public libraries continued the educational process where the schools left off and by conducting a people's university a wholesome capable citizenry would be fully schooled in the conduct of democratic life by the 1920s uh, learned popularized the idea of libraries as informal education centers followed by an american library association report established or sorry followed by an American Library Association report establishing a board on library and adult education. During World War II, President Roosevelt equated libraries and democracy, heralding their role in creating an informed citizenry. So again, I'm getting the ideas of public service and education, how this serves everyone in the public and how education is key with the kind of purpose of libraries. Great. 
lovely. I would want to keep doing that throughout the whole source. But really, really simple annotations right here. Just looking for where this source lines up with the ideas that I've already decided I want to argue. So here's another source, source C. And again, when I'm reading through this, I'm finding the source, sorry, the ideas that I've already pulled out from the prompt. Right, so I found here something about vulnerable populations and public service. I found here something about how libraries are still relevant and how they fit the community's needs. Here, developing a community. Here, public service and education. Here, possibilities and how they can stay relevant still. So forth and so on, right? And then I have my lovely chart that we went, we went over in a different video, right? How does this relate to the ideas that I already pulled out of the prompt? I have education, right? Reading with a child, building literacy. I have community, sharing books with other people. I have changes, right? These are changes that technology has brought us. Whereas usually, if you wanted to get a book, you had to do it through the library or a bookstore. And now you have the option of doing it more quickly with an ebook. And then I have down here too the idea of public service, right? That this is providing help to people and also education, right? That, you know, the, the youth who are still in high school are more likely to use that service than others. And this is the last source we'll go over. So this one is all about funding, um, how public libraries have continued to have declines in funding. But I read through this, I kind of skimmed through it, and I was like, you know what, I don't really see anything in here that kind of relates to my ideas. So I know that this source is probably not going to be an integral part of my argument. It just doesn't really match up with the ideas I want to argue. Now I could use it perhaps maybe in the um, conclusion paragraph talking about implications, right? If my argument is that libraries serve a vital role, then maybe I bring this in as kind of proof, evidence that we need to do some work changing the public's opinion so that we can provide libraries with the funding that they need in order to serve the roles I think that they should serve. But still, it's not an integral part of my argument. So once you go through all your sources, then it's time to kind of uh, take inventory of what you have. So we have right here, I have source A. These were the ideas that I had in source A. Source C, the ideas here. Source D here. Source F, eh, nothing. What's great about doing this is that you can see kind of which sources are most important for your arguments. And you can also see the connections, right? You can kind of see here I have public service and public service, education and education and education. I can see how those sources start to converse with one another, where the similarities and the differences are, where one builds upon the other. And then what I can do if I have my working outline is I can just insert the sources, right? For reading, I added this term of research, right? Reading for research versus reading for recreation. Um, I know exactly where to go to get quotes and get information to support the ideas that I have about what I think about libraries. This is also super great, and I highly recommend you do an outline for the synthesis prompt. I highly recommend an outline for all the prompts, but specifically for synthesis, because it's so important that you are using multiple sources. So before you start writing your actual essay, you should definitely check to make sure you have at least three sources used throughout your whole essay, and you have at least two per paragraph, because that's really kind of necessary in order to be synthesizing, right? You can't synthesize one source. It just doesn't, doesn't work. So to recap, we don't just start reading right away. We have to break down that prompt, get our ideas, get our working thesis going, and then we can start reading because then we will know why we are reading. We will know what ideas we need to keep in mind so that we can really streamline that reading process and make it as quick and efficient as possible. We don't have time to waste time, right? But I do want to bring this up. You don't want to skip sources. And I know that's tempting, especially with the limited time that you have. I only did four sources in my sample here just to make this video a little bit shorter. But you want to read all six of the sources. That being said, you're not reading this the same way that you're reading a rhetorical analysis prompt, right? You're, you can kind of skim over this and really just focus on the main ideas. It shouldn't take you that long. 
But if you skip sources, you never know that one that you skip might be the most important one. You definitely want to at least take a gander, take a look at all of the sources before you decide that source is not for you. So your turn to practice. I want you to go back to your sources. Uh, for the locavore prompt, you already looked at these for the source information boxes at the top. Now I want you to go through and read them. And while you're reading them, you're keeping in mind your purpose, your ideas that you wanted to argue. On the worksheet, you're going to fill out this section of the worksheet, tracking which ideas are present in each source, just like I did with my sample ones here. Okay, if you have a source that really doesn't fit, then that's okay. You can put that. But you should have multiple sources that express the ideas that you um, have pulled from the prompt. All right. Have fun.